So today we're going to talk about internal energy and what it exactly is. And we're also going to talk about the law, the first law of thermodynamics. So we can take a look at this little rock. And let's say this is the object in question. To get an idea of what internal energy is, we could give an object energy in two ways. For example, we could throw the entire rock right here. And we could also lift it up from the surface of the Earth. And this is very easy. It's going to give it gravitational potential energy or kinetic energy. But there's another way that we can give it energy. And sometimes it's not very obvious. And that's by heating it. But sometimes when you heat an object, as I am with this rock right here, it seems like the energy is disappearing. I mean, it doesn't become bigger. It doesn't change its form sometimes. And it doesn't do anything. It kind of just sits there and it gets hotter to the touch. Well, this is supplying the object with internal energy, and it is what it suggests it is. We say that it kind of disappears. It's like it's going inside of the object, and I guess it kind of is because it changes the way that the molecules inside the object move. And that's why it's called internal energy. So the definition here is that the internal energy of a system is the sum of the random distribution of kinetic and potential energies of its atoms or molecules. So what does that actually mean? Well, to find an internal energy of an object, we add up the kinetic and electrical potential energies associated with all of the molecules of that matter, which means basically if you have molecules inside an object, and this is basically a cube of gas because you can see its random motion, you can see how far they are from each other. This is a cube of gas, and when you heat this, and when you add fire to this gas, you're going to see that they actually start moving faster. And as you could have seen from my previous video, when the molecules start moving faster, they have higher kinetic energy. And an average higher kinetic energy means that it is hotter when you touch it. Now, so the kinetic energies associated with the molecules would be found by Newtonian law. And you could obviously found this by kinetic energy equals 1 out of 2 mv squared. You could also talk about how it's going to increase the potential energy of the objects and the little molecules. And what the potential energies mean is that they are going to be electrical potential energies. The molecular forces that bind these two together, if we decide to move something away from each other, we decide to move these two molecules away from each other, they're going to have the potential to go right back. And they're going to go right back into this field right here. It's very much like a gravitational potential field. You're like giving it gravitational potential or electrical potential when you move this away from the electric field. And that we've also talked about in the previous video, which you can check out. So essentially, this is a gas and their electrical potential energy can be said to be zero because they're so far away from each other that their electrical potential energy, it will very much approach zero zero joules um if you are very close to each other in terms of molecules then that means that their energies their electrical potential energies will be negative something joules and if you keep putting them away from each other for example expansion my melting or vaporization you're going to be increasing this negative value of energy as close as you can get it to zero and because you're at a gas gaseous state right now, it's going to be very close to zero. So in its essence, it's basically just what it is. It's the total energy of the kinetic as well as the electrical potential energies of all of the molecules that this little stone would have. And that's what we call internal energy. So we can add internal energy, we can increase internal energy of an object in two different ways. First of all, we can heat it as I have used in my example. But secondly, we can also compress it and we can do work on it. You might have realized when you compress something, maybe at a very high level, then it gets extremely hot. And that's what basically means compressing it. If you realize that a substance is getting hotter because you're compressing it, it means that their kinetic energy of the molecules is increasing. For instance, at the core of the Earth, we know that there is a very, very, very hot melting pot of various substances. And a lot of that heat is just generated by the immense amount of pressure that is going down from all sides into the core of the Earth. And that's an example of that. 
So let's take a look at how that happens. For heating, it's pretty straightforward. The walls of a certain container, let's say there are three molecules in there and we heat it up. Um, they will become hot, obviously. The walls will become hotter and the molecules are constantly moving at random motion and they are going to collide with the walls. When they strike the walls and the walls are hotter than the molecules, then that means that their kinetic energy will be passed on to the molecules and therefore they're going to bounce off faster. And so the molecules are going to bounce off faster, which means that they have increased kinetic energy and that is increasing the internal energy of an object. And the other way that we can do it, which is compressing an object, we can say that the walls are kind of moving inwards, and that's what they're doing. They're, when you compress something or you press it inside, you're actively applying force so that it becomes smaller and smaller. So when the walls are constantly moving inwards and the molecules co collide with a wall that is moving inwards, for example, let's say we have this molecule right here, and this wall is moving inwards, when it collides, it's actually going to bounce off at a much faster speed. The molecules gain energy through collision as well, and this is also kinetic energy. Now, losing energy, losing internal energy, is basically the opposite of what I just told you, which is losing heat or expanding. If something gets colder because it's cooling down in a room, then you can say that it's losing its energy. And when it's expanding, we can also say that it is losing energy. So the final thing that I want to talk about is the first law of thermodynamics. And the first law of thermodynamics basically states that the sum of the total work done to the gas and total energy supplied by heating the object must equal the rise in internal energy of the gas. And that, that may sound extremely simple because that's literally what we studied. Internal gas or internal energy is basically what is the kinetic energy as well as the electrical potential energy of all of the molecules. And obviously, if you decide to heat it or if you decide to compress it, obviously the increase must equal the increase of internal energy. But it actually took scientists a very long time to figure this out and grasp really the concept of how these things work and in terms of thermal physics. So this is obviously very, very simple. If you understand the principle of conservation of energy, which is that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. So if you supply something with energy, then the difference in that object must equal how much you've supplied it. And so that's the first law of thermodynamics. And this is basically just a formal statement of the principle of conservation of energy. So that's about it for this video on internal energy. I hope it was helpful and you can also check out some videos that I'm going to post in the future about thermal energy and other things about thermal physics as well as some previous videos that would be helpful for this one as well. Thank you.